hello friends so in this video we'll talk about the compliance of the lungs okay so compliance we'll try to explain it we'll try to understand with the help of this simple diagram so this is the diagram of alveoli this is at rest and this is after inspiration so once inspiration takes place there will be entry of air molecules so these are air molecules they'll enter into the respiratory tract and finally in the alveoli and as a result there will be distension of alveoli okay there will be distension of alveoli so more the distension more will be the compliance okay let's say in person a on giving uh, on inspiring same amount of air the alveoli they distend by let's say two units okay and in person b the alveoli on inspiring same amount they distend by three units so this means that the compliance of b will be more than compliance of a so in simpler language com we can say compliance is how easily the alveoli or lungs of a person can inflate okay now if we have to define compliance it's defined as delta v divided by delta p that means on unit change in pressure uh, uh what will be the change in volume of the lungs or volume of alveoli so more if the volume of change in volume of alveoli is more that means compliance will be more compliance will be more and if it's less that means compliance will be less okay compliance will be less so if change in volume is more compliance is more if change in volume is less compliance will be less so in this example compliance of b will be more than compliance of a now okay see this was the alveoli this is the alveoli and here the person has inspired these are the this is the inspired air and these are the gas molecules okay now they result in distension of the alveoli so distension of alveoli has occurred okay now what are the factors that actually affect compliance that means what factors cause this distension and what factors oppose this distension here we'll talk about two main factors first is the elastic recoil elastic recoil okay elastic recoil so see these are the alveoli okay now once these gas molecules enter they cause distension of these alveoli so alveoli they get distended now once the alveoli are distended for the exchange of gases let's say here this is a blood vessel okay let's say this is a blood vessel okay now once these alveoli are distended these it's filled with gas molecules it's actually this recoil once recoil occurs this recoil results in pushing these gas molecules into the blood so recoil is essential for the normal physiology of lungs okay recoil is essential now this recoil works in opposite direction okay let's say this is the distended lung distended alveoli recoil works in opposite direction because of recoil this lung this alveoli tends to go back to its original position so this factor has an inverse relationship with compliance okay so this is inversely related with compliance okay another factor second factor is called as surface tension okay let's try to understand this by using the same diagram okay let me zoom in here let me say these are small water molecules here now this alveoli on the inner side it's lined with these small water molecules and they form a continuous lining they form a membrane like structure because of the property known as surface tension so on the inside it's lined with these water molecules and these water molecules exert something called as surface tension okay. now these water molecules they will tend to stay together okay tend to stay together they act like a membrane or something and tend to always be together now any force that will try to break them apart they'll oppose that force okay so now because of compliance there is going to be extension of this alveoli so this alveoli will become extended like this okay now due to this extension this surface tension can break okay these water molecules can get separated due to this extension so this these water molecules they they tend to keep this alveoli in the same position that means they oppose the distension of the alveoli okay so again 
this surface tension it has an inverse relationship with compliance okay inverse relationship with compliance so these are the two important factors affecting compliance first is the elastic recoil and second is the surface tension both of these oppose compliance okay now this surface tension it's not of it does not decrease compliance to much extent because the surface tension is actually taken care of something in the lungs okay so we have something called as surfactant which is present in the lungs and this surfactant actually decreases the surface tension now because of this decrease in surface tension it does not affect compliance to a much extent okay now if we take the same lungs let's say this is a lungs this is alveoli now if this alveoli here i told you these water molecules they only line the lining of alveoli they form the lining in the lining of the alveoli okay let's say whole of this alveoli is filled with fluid okay let's say whole of this alveoli is filled with fluid okay if whole of the alveoli is filled with fluid now will there be any surface tension answer is no because they do not it's like they do not just form the inner lining of alveoli they just it, the whole of the alveoli is filled with uh, fluid so here there will be no surface tension and thus no surface tension means there will be more compliance okay that means if an if a lungs is filled with saline and another lungs is filled with air okay the compliance of the lung filled with saline will be more why because here there will be no surface tension okay, okay. now let's move on to the next slide now compliance so we understood the meaning of compliance we understood the basic uh, concept behind compliance now this compliance can be of two types it depends on how it's measured okay depends on how it's measured one is called as the static compliance so static compliance means it's measured at rest at rest so person is not breathing when the person is not breathing and we measure compliance that's called as static compliance okay static compliance and it will just have one value okay one value another is called as the dynamic compliance so what is dynamic compliance dynamic complex compliance means when the person is breathing when the person is breathing that means the person actually can be inspiring here or person can be expiring here so during inspiration the compliance has a one value and during expiration compliance has a different value okay now always remember dynamic compliance during expiration will be more as compared to inspiration okay during an expiration the value of compliance will be more so let's try to understand this further with the help of this diagram so this is a diagram as you can see it shows compliance so this is the lung volume change that means delta v and here is the pressure change that means delta p so we already discussed delta v by delta p is the compliance so the slope of this curve is going to show compliance okay now here this curve is the compliance during inspiration okay and during inspiration it's a compliance during inspiration as we all know during inspiration the volume increases and the pressure becomes more negative intrapleural pressure so this will be the direction okay this is during inspiration and then the person starts expiring the pressure starts increasing and then decreases okay so this is the curve during expiration okay now always remember ex compliance during expiration will be more than compliance during inspiration okay so you can easily understand this from uh, this graph okay let me take any point let's say let's take this point at this point that means at this pressure the compliance of inspiration is this okay and the compliance of expiration is this so clearly compliance of expiration is greater than the compliance of inspiration okay now from this diagram let's try to find the normal value we all know the normal intrapleural pressure normal intrapleural pressure is around 5 centimeters of water that means this point so the normal compliance taking average of both inspiration and expiration values is around this okay so the normal value of compliance is about 0 0.2 liters per centimeter water pressure okay so this is the normal value of compliance normal value okay normal value of compliance now this curve this curve here 
this is during inspiration and then back in this direction during expiration this is called as a hysteresis loop because it forms a closed loop this is called as hysteresis loop okay hysteresis loop okay now let's try to understand some conditions in which compliance is going to increase and compliance is going to decrease okay i already told you that compliance is inversely proportional to the elastic recoil okay so i also told you that this elastic recoil is actually essential for the exchange of gases okay let's say these are alveoli this is one alveoli this is another alveoli now this and here is the blood vessel <coughs> now once this alveoli is distended for these gas molecules which are present inside let's say these are gas molecules inside to go into this blood vessel elastic recoil is essential that means once this recoil occurs okay that means a different color once the recoil occurs only then these gas molecules will go into the from this alveoli into the blood vessel so recoil is very important is there any condition in which the elastic recoil will be is decreased yes is there any condition in which the elastic recoil of lungs is decreased so there's a condition called as emphysema emphysema now emphysema it's an obstructive lung disorder and here the elastic recoil of the lungs is decreased so if elastic recoil is decreased that means the compliance here will be increased so the condition in which compliance is increased is emphysema okay that's why we say that emphysema in emphysema there are hyperinflated lungs okay hyperinflated lungs now this is because of increased compliance okay on the other hand if we take example of restrictive lung diseases all the restrictive lung diseases they decrease the compliance of the lungs okay the hypo there are hypoinflated lungs present in these disorders restrictive lung diseases okay now here's a simple curve let's try to understand this curve as you can see this curve is between lung volume change and between the transpulmonary pressure change that means this curve shows delta v divided by delta p that's the compliance okay as we already studied so let's try to focus on these curves first these three curves okay the one which is shown in gray in color this curve is the compliance curve for the normal person okay for a normal person so this will be the direction and this is the normal hysteresis loop okay so this is the normal compliance curve and so curve a this is normal okay now we have another compliance curve let's say this compliance b curve so as you can see in this case the compliance is greater than a okay if we take one point let's say this point if we take one point the compliance of b is more than that of a okay compliance of b this is b compliance of b is more than that of a so that means this can be a case of yes compliance is increased here so it can be a case of emphysema yes emphysema so curve b is the curve for emphysema okay emphysema now let's move on to curve c so curve c in curve c the compliance is decreased so here this shows increased compliance this shows normal compliance and curve c shows decreased compliance so this should refer to restrictive lung disease restrictive lung diseases okay now what is this curve so what is this curve any guesses so let me give you a hint the compliance here is greater than all of these okay because only this much let's say this much is the change in volume okay now only this much pressure is required only a small amount of pressure is required to inflate the lungs to, by a large volume so compliance is very high in this case compliance is very 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 high so this is a case of lungs filled with water or saline okay lungs filled with saline so here compliance is very very high why because there will be no surface tension okay so this is for the saline filled lungs this one is for the normal lungs this is for emphysema and this one is for restrictive lung diseases okay so that's all about compliance thank you